Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Facebook Live. Uh, we're here at Above Alaska Aviation. I want to give you a tour of the 2018 Alaska Airmen's Association Raffle Super Cub. You could have a chance for $60 to win this airplane. Um, the current status, I'm going to walk you around the shop and show you where we're at and what we put on it and what we're going to be doing next. So behind me is the fuselage, as you can see. It's pretty much all ready to go for fabric. We'll probably start that tomorrow. Um, we've got what you're seeing is the exterior of the interior. It's all carbon fiber from uh, Carbon Concepts. Um, all donated. Well, most of the stuff on here is donated. Um, you can see the interior is in place. Um, Randy over at Carbon Concepts wanted to highlight the other things you can do other than just carbon fiber. Um, so you see the, uh, the side panels have a yellow Kevlar woven into them. And being that the paint scheme of the airplane is going to be yellow and black, that kind of goes with the theme. And he's got some highlight pieces that he's put in there. And seats installed, the brake master cylinders with the North River boosters, courtesy of Alaska, or Airframes Alaska, are in and ready to go. Uh, we've got a lot of Atlee Dodge stuff in here. A lot of Univer stuff. Um, carbon fiber floorboards to replace the original wood. We've got uh, Dakota Cubs fuel selector and headerless, uh, actually it's Cub Crafters headerless system. Um, we got their uh, Dakota Cub trim system. Uh, most of the wiring is done. We've got uh, hooker harness, donated seat belts and shoulder harnesses. We've got the Willow Mountain Ranch lowered and extended baggage floor, third seat option. And I'll take you up here and show you some of the fun bird nest wiring we got going on. The instrument panel just went out to uh, advanced powder coating. For uh, powder coating, we're actually going to have uh, two coats of powder coat put on it, a white coat and then a black coat. And then uh, 60, Latitude 67 Designs is going to laser etch the placards through the black into the white to expose the white below, so it'll be white lettering. Um, so that should be getting done in the next week or so, and then we'll be installing the panel and while the fabric's going on and putting all the instruments in it. Um, most of the wiring you see here is courtesy of Northern Lights Avionics. They wired the harnesses together for us, and then we pretty much just have to do the lights and switches and circuit breakers and some of the other items that weren't provided by them. Um, we've got the uh, Electro Airs, uh, electronic emission modules are in here along with their wiring. Once the firewall goes on, that'll all come through the firewall and get connected to the electronic ignition. Um, as we work our way around here, you see the other side's a little busier. This is where kind of the guts are stored. You get a kind of a better view of the fuel system. Basically, you've got, you've got four outlets from the tanks. There's a tank in each wing, forward and an aft outlet on each tank, and they run forward and backwards and they all kind of come collected together here at the fuel selector which then goes to the engine and you see the wiring harnesses we had to run to get to you know, the rear headset jacks and nav and strobe and the tail which were donated by Wayland. And, and you can see the trim system in here this is the flap cable you pull the flap lever it pulls on the cable lower your flaps and then the trim system that all spins around as you crank the trim wheel to adjust your pitch attitude. Are we putting a skylight in this one or are we covering the top? Uh, it's going to have a skylight. Um, it's not going to be the full greenhouse. Again, we're trying to go original with Piper, original design, so it'll have a skylight up here. And then the back will be all fabric. You notice the D window, the standard issue cub window. And who donated the glass? Uh, Great Lakes Aeroplastics. They donated all the glass, windows, uh, windshield, all of the above. Um, yeah, so that's about it. So we can take it back and show you some more of the trim system. You can see the trim cables actually run all the way back through here. 
super lightweight carbon fiber baggage door out of the way. Uh, so that all comes back to the, uh, the trim jack screw here. So as you crank that wheel up front, it, turn, it runs these cables and spins this pulley, which then runs this yoke up and down on the jack screw. And the, the leading edge uh, of the horizontal lifts up and down. So Andrew's spinning it for us so you can see it moving up. Um, and they this also have an upper baggage. So there's the upper baggage door. Carbon fiber. And that will actually be on the other side over here in this door frame. So when you open it up, you'll have all of this upper baggage. Um, it's so far aft that there's a 10 pound weight limit, so you don't want to load it. So it's good for putting your you know, sleeping bag or survival gear. Um, but a cool thing is that, remember that lower extended baggage is so far back, if you roll a screwdriver back there or your Alaska supplement or something to that effect and you can't reach it or you don't want to have to climb in the back, you install this nice little sliding door that opens up and you can just reach right down in there and pull out whatever it is that you stick Can you stick your hand back in there again? Okay. Back there. Thanks, so I'll take you around and show you some of the other stuff that's going on. Um, we've got a whole pile of parts that have yet to go on. That's most of that's going to happen after um, uh, fabric. I go ahead and show you some of this stuff. Some of it's pretty cool. Donated by Northern Lights and Garmin, uh, G5, which will be a glass display showing your attitude and airspeed and altitude and VSI and a ball for coordination. And it's also very lightweight and very simplistic. Uh, we've got the Garmin Era 660, which is a handy add-on. And this will collaborate with uh, CGR 30P from Electronics International, and it'll uh, it'll tell you on the CGR how many gallons of fuel you'll have at your destination, and it gets that information from the GPS. It'll also uh, collaborate with the Garmin GTX 345 transponder with ADS-B, so you'll actually be able to see traffic right on the display of this, when, uh, as long as they have a transponder transmitting. Um, let's see, what else do we have over here that's fun? we got a set of uh, wheels and brakes from Cleveland, and this will go with the second set of wheels. And uh, It's going to have a whole separate set of gear, so if you wanted to swap over from skis to wheels without having to take it all apart, just pull one set of gear off and throw the other on. Mm -hmm. um, we got the headsets from David Clark, and they are actually, they just went to... Um, Alaska Hydrographics for hydro dipping, and he just sent us a cool picture of those, and they're, they're pretty amazing. For the helmets. For the helmets, yeah. Um, the landing gear from Airframes, the three inch extended gear with steps, is back over here. So it's just kind of sitting waiting for a finished airplane. We got the baby bush wheel sitting over here. It was donated by um, Alaska Bush Wheels, Airframes Alaska. Um, a lot of hardware. We've got control cables donated by Atley Dodge. Um, the, the aileron here is from uh, Dakota Cub, and we've got another one on its way. So those are the only last two things that need fabric, and everything else, which I'll show you here in a minute, has gone through fabric. Uh, we've got a windshield defroster. We've got uh, the uh, high-capacity uh, high gas escalator. Uh, tail wheel springs, this will be a, a bus bar for the electronics for all the avionics and whatnot. And we're putting in the performance, performance stole flaps which tend to require a stronger flap return spring so we got these from Dakota Cub and they, they work real well and pull the flaps up good for us. And a lot of trim stuff. Um, all the Wayland lights are all fairly, fairly compact, all LED. It's going to have strobe, beacon, uh, nav, and landing and taxi lights. Um, you 
see we got the doors down there and the lower door is going to have glass on it so it'll be better visibility that was donated by uh, that was discounted by airframes came mm -hmm. with the part of the fuselage the door. and the glass and the glass was not um, well, maybe it was, um, now that I think about it, it was donated by CAC Plastics. Um, we've got the Alpha Omega suspension system, and these are, that box is stuff that needs to go through paint still. So this will get scuff sanded and, and painted, and we're going to paint them black to match the theme. And Tempest gave us a case of oil for, or a case of oil filters and spark plugs. Uh, and a... What else did they give us? They gave us a oil filter adapter. And, and Marble Shoveler got us a carburetor. So. And is that the Niagara? Yep, yeah, this is the Niagara. It's a seven row rear mount oil cooler, which is part of the requirement for a 160 horsepower upgrade. And they donated this, thanks to them. And we got plenty of stickers from them too if anybody wants a sticker. Um, you see the windshield, that's all been cut and fit and drilled, it's ready to go. So we've got it covered in the, the factory protective paper just so it doesn't get scratched up. And yeah, so why don't you come with me and I'll show you a couple more things. Get the end of the spray booth and show you uh, the wing, one of the wings. So this has gone through the fabric. It's been heat, cotton, drum tight now. And it's had uh, two, two coats of poly brush sprayed on it. Um, this, all, this whole process is you know, the polyfiber process from consolidated aircraft coatings. We donated all of the materials for this. Um, so once it gets the poly brush sprayed on, which is the pink stuff you're probably familiar with seeing, uh, that's a sealant, it basically makes the fabric waterproof, then it gets two cross coats, and I think we talked about this before, but it's a north-south and an east-west, so it gets basically four coats, and then it goes out to get sanded, and that's what you're seeing here, that kind of molten finishes from sanding it, and lots of man hours involved in sanding. So the other side looks similar to that, and now this will get one last coat, a uh, cross coat of silver, and then it'll have to gas off for at least five days, five to seven days, and then we'll be spraying the yellow. Um, and what we'll also do before we spray the yellow, after we spray the last coat of silver, is we're gonna coat it with a coat of white polytone, which will give it a, a, a good base for that yellow to come out real vibrant. Uh, usually with reds and yellows, you wanna do that. Um, so we'll run you over here, show you a few other things. It's kind of a mess, but it's a working shop, so that's what, what you normally see in a working shop. So here we've got the uh, performance stole, uh, formerly known as Keller flaps. They're double slotted flaps. That's actually just one set for one wing. Um, and they kind of mesh together and then they kind of come down like you might see on a, a jet, a 737 or something. It uh, provides uh, a significantly reduced stall speed so you can land shorter and slower. Um, and it also lowers your, your pitch attitude when you're on final approach so you can see where your, your touchdown point is. Um, we've got a bunch of flight controls back there. Um, this is the rudder and it's gone through um, the fabric process, and it's, you can see it's now white. This has got that base coat of polytone on it so that it'll make that yellow pop that much better. So all of the uh, fabric products will go through this process before painting. And these guys, JJ and Red, are back here sanding away on that other wing. They're just about wrapped up with it. So as soon as that's done, that'll go into the booth with the other one, and they'll get their final coat of probably spray on them. Uh, also, I forgot to mention the bottom stack of 35-inch bush wheels over there is for the raffle plane. Those were don donated by airframes in the last bush wheel. And the engine is currently at uh, Alaska Aircraft Engines getting overhauled. 
So I'm hoping to see that fairly soon so we can get all the plumbing wired up for that. Um, a few other things we got going on in the shop. You can see there's a, another cub back here. This is a client. He's having us do fabric on that. Um, but he's also not in a rush because he doesn't want to have to sweep the wings in the winter and it's we got four feet of snow outside. So it's kind of our back burner project and we work on it as time permits. Um, you probably saw this other airplane over here. This is a, a client who actually comes in and works on it himself and it's an experimental and we just kind of give him some assistance on it as he has questions. Um, it's actually, I think he's calling it a Tundra Boss. It's got a an E225 six cylinder, which was the original predecessor to the 0470. So it's a little lighter than an 0470, but it's about the same horsepower. Um, it's be a four place, and his wings are back here, the silver ones there. Um, those will get fabric eventually, but he's gonna have the performance stole slotted flaps as well. And in addition to that, he's going to have um, leading edge slats. So it should be a pretty good short field performer. Um, back over here on the other side, we've got the, the cub, this, this silver and purple cub's wings, which you probably recognize that process. It's got the fabric on, shrunk, and it's been rib stitched, and it's ready for uh, finishing tapes to be put on. And then it'll go through the same silver process and paint. And back here we got Eli. And he's working on a set of Stinson 108-3 wings. And he's got one of them finished over here through fabric and been shrunk. So that actually gets pop riveted rather than rib stitch. So that'll be one of the next steps on that. But it's usually best to get all, all the parts through to a certain phase and then do the next phase all at the same time little more efficient so you can see he's actually heat shrinking with an iron to get that curve or that leading edge for the fabric to lay down and then he'll be gluing that down and once it's all glued and set for a day we'll heat shrink the whole thing and you can see this is what it looks like before it's heat shrunk it doesn't have that drum top it's kind of loose and floppy but once you throw that iron on there you get this nice and drum tight and I'm sure somebody probably noticed that the mall's back in here This guy is getting quite an extravagant amount of mods to it. It will be a, it starts as an M5-235 and it's going to get modified to an M6 and then it's going to get modified even further to put M7, the long wings on. So that's pretty much the gist of it. It's the update for now. Um, things are going to start happening pretty quick now that we're going through the fabric process. and. Um, we'll try to get a time lapse out here shortly and we'll certainly get one of the fuselage fabric going on for you guys. Sarah's asking me something. What's that? Um, we have an announcement to make if someone wants to purchase their raffle plane tickets. Oh yeah, yeah. the airmen's brought us up a, uh, a kiosk. So they are now selling tickets through Above Alaska Aviation or at Above Alaska Aviation via our kiosk. So if you want to come by, check out the project in person and buy your tickets, come on by.